Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and uh, yeah, we're almost there. This is the last video until the Immortal Empires gameplay video starts showing up on my channel. And this is a little let's play dedicated to Valkyr the Bloody, obviously provided early by Creative Assembly. So I could have a little video done in advance, we can talk about it, and I feel like it's something that we should do. Even though it's almost time, well, we won't be seeing Valkyrie until the week after, but you know what I mean. I can't believe we're actually so close to Immortal Empires after so long waiting. So let's not waste any more time, jump right in and, uh, kind of enjoy this one, right? Valkyrie the Bloody, a name that commands respect from the Norskan tribes and fear in equal measure from the rest of the world. Once the warrior queen of the Schwarze Wolf, now she acts as Korn's Valkyrie, rewarding the strong amongst Norska's finest, and punishing the weak who either defy Korn's rage or hide in cowardice. We're going to be starting at turn 70, so let's get you up to speed. First of all, in her bloody conquest to reach Zambaijin was Village, giving us two skulls for the price of one, and their holds in Kislev. Alright, so we're gonna stop off here, and that's mainly because they're starting on turn 70, which is a bit strange, so we're not really getting information as to where she starts. However, if she's going to Prague and dealing with Village, and we know Village starts in uh, Norska, then... Yeah, it's very likely that she's starting very close too. Though, mind you, we did see early on in one of the campaign Let's Plays that she was quite close there. I can't remember who, but yeah, I'm imagining she's going to be around there. Either way, yeah, it kind of makes sense to go for Prague. I feel bad for that city. It's just always destroyed. Next was Festus and the Empire, bringing an end to their cowardly poxes and plagues. And Festus's dreams of the perfect room, which is... Um, it's Earl Grey hot, by the way. With these roadblocks out of the way, we have a new goal. To enter the Mountains of Morn and to reap the souls of the Ogres. Big lads, big souls, right? We've got rifts back at Frozen Landing in the Goromadni and another in the Empire. So we can back up Valkyr's rampage with additional armies as and when the needs be. Also, our boy Morax down there. Hi, Mora. So the Goromandi might actually be her start as there's a rift there and generally as far as we've seen from the campaign footage for like say for example uh, Azazel, the rift seems to spawn very close to your original star position. So yeah, that's not too bad. The Demon Prince looks cool by the way, but uh, you know, we've seen enough Demon Princes already. And it's cool that you can get one in the Empire too, because that means obviously you can move your troops around and have them teleport. It works for an invasion. Still very odd to go from your start position down to Minenheim and then up to the Mountains of Morn, but hey, I'm not judging playstyle. Right now, we find ourselves at Zorn Uzgul, laying siege to the Greenskins. Sure, they're angry, fighty folk too. So while there's some potential for kinship and alliance, we can't let the blood stop flowing, lest we lose our murderous prowess and bonuses attained from our bloodletting meter. Alright, so now we know exactly, well, what one specific section of the uh, bloodletting does here, because we were expecting it to be different to what Scarbrand has, and that makes sense, because Scarbrand had the whole thing with growth and all that. But yeah, authority and unit experience, which is actually not too bad, considering because the more unit experience you do get, the better it is for upgrading units, and I mean, we're playing Chaos, and that's kind of how it works. So, um, sorry fellas, but, you know, skulls for the skull throne, blood for the blood god. I mean, what even is a Gorgon Morg? After we water the earth with our enemy's blood, we will drink whatever's left. Alright, just stopping here for a little bit, and it's more the case of uh, the unit cards look nice. Obviously, I think that's a Chaos Chosen next to the uh, Gorby's Chariot, and obviously there's the Exalted Hero of Corn. Everything else we've pretty much already seen because, well, you know, uh, they're base game units. Uh, these are just transferred into the Corn roster, which obviously makes sense because there was a lot of stuff done. But yeah, no, I'm quite happy. Interesting army composition, though. I think by turn 70, I'd not really have a giant or a manticore in all honesty, but then again, it could just be the case that they had the option and you want a big dude. I mean, the giant does cause terror and obviously the manticore is good for sniping, but if left alone, eh, it's not too great. 
but still, decent army, decent army. I mean, it's all melee based, but, you know, corn. Well, Skull Cannon too. The Green Tide have the numbers, sure, but we have chariots, monstrosities, chaotic hatred. Yep, it's that time again. I'm just going to stop and say, oh my god, I really love the look of the, uh, the war shrines. Like, you guys know I've been waiting a long, long time for this, and they've got the icons there, so we know this is a dedicated one to corn and all that. So, yeah, I'm just really, really hyped up. Despite the fact that we're getting pretty much loads of Monogod rosters for the Warriors of Chaos, I think this is the most anticipated unit for me, so yeah. And a big hungry boy. Oh, he's, uh, he's having a snack. The Greenskins are learning that numbers only take you so far when you're fighting Korn's Valkyrie and the relentless tide of pure hatred. Eat their souls! Now, the thing about indiscriminate, unabashed bloodshed is that eventually, you're gonna turn a few heads. This is a good thing though, as Korn has taken notice of our bloody conquest through these lands and has decided to impart some gifts for Valkyr's forces. So let's end our turn before we take out Tsar Nagrand and just have a little think about what we'll want next. Oh, uh, what's this? Clan Gritus won a peace treaty. <laughs> no. Get him, Morak. That was cringe. I mean, it makes sense, but that was a little bit cringy. I mean, it's just worse when you see a freaking corn demon prince dressed up like a gimp running after you. It's, um, yeah, you'd think it was a Suneshi demon prince instead. <laughs> okay, so that instance of violence aside, we have a choice here. From interesting, powerful artifacts and boons for our vassals, to a good increase in experience for our forces. We are going to opt for the last- Interesting powerful artifacts, but does not show the interesting powerful artifacts. My dude, why? Why do you do this? But yeah, okay, this is cool. This is like the Eye of the Gods thing from uh, Tabletop. So this actually looks quite interesting. So it turns out, I guess, the eye itself, which is in the middle of your uh, bar where your money and your souls are, when that fills up, I guess you have a chance to... Um, get an event like this or something like that it's a bit weird but yeah it's cool you can either get some demon units you see a skull cannon there and four units of flesh hounds that's cool gifts of choice doesn't really tell us anything then we got ruin and the teacher and uh a powerful artifact once again but they don't show it, it does wound the character though which is interesting but i guess it's kind of like a trade-off eh, yeah i guess that kind of makes sense I think it's just, yeah, it's just a basic wound though. Were it killing a character outright, then that would be an issue. But if it's just a wound, they normally come back in, what, five turns or so? With this murderous knowledge unlocked, I think it's about time we put down these green skins once and for all. The gates of Zarnagrand might currently yes. keep cavalry and other monstrosities at bay, considering they don't know how to climb ladders. But if you think walls will stop Valkyr's fury, then, well, Look where that gets you. We'll use Valkyr's wings and terrifying speed to deal with the greenskin reinforcements, while the rest of the army take it to the strategic points and everyone else getting in our way. And uh, to top it all off, Big Sword. Well, with our fun jaunt in Greenskin lands over, it's time to focus on our main goal, the Mountains of Morn, and its tasty, tasty yoga souls. Maybe even Cafe Beyond, if we're feeling desserts. At this time, we're going to invest in new Gifts of Chaos, which become pretty powerful in the late game. We can use these to truly get the most out of our army, making our killing swift, exact, and without compromise. Alright, so yeah, Greater Demons are recruited for this, which I think is going to be quite interesting. Obviously it does depend on how everything kind of works out. We need a bit of information as to can you boost them up, are they viable, all this type of stuff. It's just um, these Let's Plays are kind of small, so they don't really give us a lot of information. However, 
we've run over time. The Mountains of Morn are desolate, raised, and those ogre souls are no more. But there is a definite stench in the air, one that Valkyr knows all too well. Selenesha's legions have been here, and if you want to know how she feels about them, just ask her shield. Of course, if you think Valkyr would forgive Azazel and his ecstatic legion for this little transgression, you've not been paying attention. Okay, so we've seen this trailer before. I just want to talk a little bit about this. I actually kind of like the fact that they do the Let's Plays and tie it into the character trailers. I think that's actually kind of smart because it's very thematic. It kind of keeps the theme going and it's just more role playability. That and the fact of it's just kind of smartly done. I don't think there's many um, gaming companies that kind of do this style. I hope Creative Assembly keep doing this for future DLC packs. With our vengeance enacted on Azazel's right-hand man, the Prince of Damnation himself is still out there, and we're still just below 60,000 souls. In the Howling Wastes, however, there's a few more treats in store for us. A caravan from Cathay has opted for a holiday in most treacherous lands. Some Darkland Orcs are simply refusing to die, and just over yonder, a beautiful sight. Ogres, my lord. Well, he said the thing, roll credits. Uh, I'm not going to complain, I actually did get a chuckle from that. Um, yeah, so far so good, and it is looking interesting. I do like all the dynamic shots that they're doing for everything, and just kind of showing off everything as much as possible. It's definitely a step in the right direction when it comes to the Let's Plays lately, that they've been doing a lot better stuff. I, like I said before, hopefully this continues for future DLC, because this is so much better than what they used to do in Warhammer 2. So, let's get to doing what Valkyr does best. You know, separating heads from shoulders. Montage? Montage. bloody swathe cut through the howling wastes, we've got the souls we need. And some of them are even ogre souls. Are ogre souls bigger than regular souls? Um, uh, no idea. What's important is that we've hit 60,000 souls, and now we can begin our journey to the lost city of Zanbaijin. Now is the time of Valkyr's ascension. Absolute cocktees. Why? I wanted to see Zambajin. Okay, I guess we're gonna have to wait. Maybe they'll just let the YouTubers like myself and the others just show that off. But I guess, yeah. Anyways, yeah, this was pretty interesting. And obviously, they did show off a lot more. Kind of happy that they did show off a little bit more than usual, just because it's just a little bit of context for Valkyr, who's been a very anticipated character. But all in all, Pretty excited. It's not long now, guys. On Friday, I'll be able to start showing gameplay. I've got a lot of stuff planned for you guys. And yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very, very interesting. But let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. Let me know what you guys think. And I shall see you all again very, very soon.